Every five German soldiers killed in the war died on the Eastern Front. A story that is close to home in Southern California involves the talent of a Hollywood legend. To share that story, we have John Collins, who told me he enlisted in the Air Force then served as a Marine officer. Hmm, interesting. Would you please share, John? In 1938, Bob Hope was selected as star and host for the Pepsodent Show, broadcast on NBC, after working for many years, building a successful career from vaudeville to Broadway, radio, and film. The opening monologue of his May 6, 1941 show included the lines, This is Bob Marchfield Hope, telling all aviators, while we can't advise you on how to protect your shoots, there's nothing like Pepsodent to protect your toots. His May 6, 1941 performance at Marchfield, California was the beginning of a new mission for Hope. His work took on added meaning when he was asked to perform his show outside of the studio in front of military audience. That day, he discovered his most cherished audience, the armed forces. After that performance, Hope drastically modified his show, normally recorded in a studio in front of a live audience, taking his wartime programs on the road to military camps and bases across the country. During the war, only nine of Hope's 144 broadcasts were recorded in the studio. The rest were performed in front of troops on their home turf, whether that was on the home front or the fighting front. The radio show Command Performance was a perfect vehicle for Bob Hope, to whom the idea of performing for those in service was central. Broadcast from 1942 to 1949 by the Armed Forces Radio Service, AFRS, Command Performance was transmitted with few exceptions only to troops overseas, not on domestic stations. The Armed Forces Radio Service was a new division of the War Department formed to bring entertainment, information, and education to military personnel over the airwaves. AFRS would become the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service and is now called the American Forces Network with its broadcast facility located at where? March Air Reserve Base. It is estimated that by the time of his death, at age 100 in 2003, Bob Hope had entertained more than 11 million troops. Bob Hope was MC of this show many numerous times. And on July 7th, 1942, that broadcast was added to the National Recording Registry by the Library of Congress in 2005. Back to you, Connie. Thank you, John. John Collins, who shared about Bob Hope. John, are you still there to share a little bit about your family connection to I am, the Bob I Hope am. story? I am, Madam. Okay, would you do so? I have a personal connection to Bob Hope in the USO oh. because my father participated in many USO shows. And the way he did that is because he was a trumpet player. In World War II, he served in the Army Air Corps, but it, he never saw any kind of fighting at the front lines because he was a member of base, uh, the, the base jazz band and dance band, and every base commander wanted to have a band. So if you had an extra tenor sax and needed a bass player, you'd do some horse trading. Well, after the war, he had a lot of great experience in, in bands, and he studied with people like 
his friends, Dave Brubeck and others that you may have heard of. But he eventually went to big bands like Woody Herman and Les Brown. Les Brown and his band of renown was the house band for Bob Hope and his USO tours. And so my father went on many of these tours, at first to Germany, and then when Vietnam really cranked up, he was in Thailand, Vietnam, Guam, many other stations. And Bob Hope, I have to tell you, took care of his performers and his staff as a about a a nine-year-old boy, I got to go to a Rose Bowl, sit on the 50-yard line with a whole crew of Bob Hope performers and staff as we watched the Washington Huskies beat the Minnesota Gophers. And Bob Hope didn't spare any expense. He bought these tickets on the 50-yard line and gave gifts to all of his performers and staff. That's... um, one more quick, quick comment, Connie, may I? Okay. Okay. And that is that uh, my father's oldest brother enlisted before Pearl Harbor, and he was stationed in Manila at, in the quartermaster corps with the army. When the Japanese invaded, they marched down to Manila and they conducted the Bataan Death March to a concentration camp of several miles north. My my uncle survived that, and but died a few months later in 1942 um, in the concentration camp. They repatriated his remains only about four years ago, and I was pleased to receive those and then hold a ceremony in his honor at the Riverside um, National Cemetery, and I was pleased to do that. So uh, I thought I'd mention that little World War II vignette for the good of the order. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, John. 